So good afternoon and welcome to this week's Business Bites. I am joined this week by the fabulous Owen Phillips, who is the Development Manager for the Community Foundation for Lancashire. Uh, welcome, Owen. Hi, Lisa. Thank you so much for having me. It's great to oh, be here. No problem at all. It's a delight to have you. Thank you for finding the time during lockdown to spend with me. <laughs> um, how has it been for you? It's been good. It's been very busy. Um, we're doing a lot of work at the Community Foundation, supporting communities across Lancashire, uh, fundraising for the Lancashire COVID Support Fund. So a busy time, uh, but an exciting one because we get to help groups uh, who are on the front line. And seeing their challenges has been difficult, but feeling like we're actually doing something to support them. So yes. positive in that place. Brilliant. And just for those listeners that, that might not know what Community Foundation for Lancashire actually do, do you want to just elaborate a little bit, Owen? Yeah, absolutely. So the Community Foundation for Lancashire is part of a nationwide network of community foundations. There are 46 in total. So if you've not come across a community foundation before, I'm sure you'd be aware of our work because we distribute funds for organisations like Comet Relief um, and government home office uh, support, as well as other local trusts and foundations specific to Lancashire or Lancashire businesses. Um, and other national companies who have funds with us, so United Utilities. So essentially, we are a charity who manage funds and support other charities. We provide the back office support right. for them. Um, specifically, we act as the Community Foundation for Lancashire. We help Lancashire communities by distributing funds and managing funds for those particular foundations. And these are really the, the small, very frontline charities, community interest companies, that, that your services, that, I mean, at the minute they can apply, I think it's for a £5,000 grant um, from all the work that you're doing to, uh, to stack that money up. Um, and, and they're providing some key services. I know one of our share members, uh, Rummage Rescue, was there, they've recently, uh, and, and we forwarded that to our newsletter and they've applied and, and been successful as well. So that's brilliant that, that it actually works. Yeah, absolutely. So that was our day to day. That's what we normally do is manage funds. We're at the moment managing the Lancashire COVID support fund. But as part of our network, we are distributing money from the National Emergency Trust. Yes. So all community foundations across the country are managing that funding that's coming through. I'm specifically looking after Lancashire and we're associated with Merseyside. So a lot of the Northwest. Yes. Um, but the community foundations across the country are distributing that money from the National Emergency Trust. So if you saw the big night in, funds raised from that will go via it and it was mentioned on the programme. And yes, you're absolutely right, Lisa. So there's £5,000 grants available to grassroots organisations and charities who are helping on the front line of the pandemic, who are getting money to community groups. Um, for example, at the moment, 51% have been food banks. Wow. People are really struggling in their food security and knowing where the next meal's coming from. And what we're noticing is that that's people who are using the food banks anyway, who were really struggling before the crisis. But the massive uptake uh, and need for them now with people who've lost their jobs, who are just really struggling to, to make ends meet. Um, so there's a lot of funding and support gone there. But also beyond that as well, in terms of reducing isolation, making sure there are organisations supporting people who are isolated through remote friendships or telephone services looking at mental health and emotional support, because we know that's a real difficulty at this time, as well as financial and debt advice. People who were employed in businesses were doing well, and then everything has shifted. So they now need additional support. So we're really trying to make sure we're getting money out immediately to the groups who really need it at the moment. And you must be seeing some some quite tragic stories out there as well on that front line because I think you know a lot of us are at home and we're trying our best to stay upbeat mentally and mm -hmm. keep business ticking over or take out you know access the the government support schemes. But there are some real genuine tragedies happening across the county that that need us to reach out and support. Yes, there are, and and I think it's that realization that it's affecting everybody, yeah. and it's totally different to the work that we've done before. So for example, we managed the Lancashire flood appeal in 2015. Now that was devastating to a lot of homes across Lancashire, but there was a clear beginning and end date. The floods receded. We were able to help with the recovery. What we're in a period now is that we don't know when the end date will be. 
we're, we're in phase one of our plan to help get support to people because we know that that's the immediate emergency response. But there's really likely to be a recovery period and then a resilience period where we help um, groups in the community rebuild, looking at how they help people. Um, as a lot of the groups that we're dealing with are frontline staff who can't be furloughed. They're not eligible for some of the government schemes because they have to keep working. They're providing care and assistance but there isn't an additional funding that's met them yet to deliver those services. So they're having to eat into reserves. There are people working above and beyond what their normal workload would be. And we have to get the support to them to make sure that they're looking after their communities. So a lot of the work that we do with is grassroots charities, but really any registered charity who, who is eligible for the fund can apply to us. We, there are some challenges around there are fantastic groups of volunteers where people have sprung into action and started to do some um, work that they don't normally do but of course they haven't got bank accounts and things so we're looking at partnering with charities that can support those groups and individuals right. so making sure they get the funds they need as well. Brilliant um, and, and we'll give details at the end on how people can get in touch with you about that and it's not just about getting the money out there is it and, and getting to these people that so desperately need it it's also about getting the money in um, and you've got a big, big remit at the minute. Do you want to talk to me a little bit about, about that target? Yeah, thank you. So we, we set an initial target of raising a million pounds for Lancashire. Um, I'm pleased to say we're almost there. We're really looking for individuals who can and want to give or businesses who feel that they're able, even during this crisis, to give. Uh, we're really looking for their support. We're at £970,000 raised, so which is really good. That's really positive. But the, the tragedy of some of this is we do realise we're going to need more than that. We know now it's not going to be enough because of the, the need. As soon as the money comes in, we're trying to desperately get it out to the groups. We're not holding on to it. We're not keeping it as a pot in reserve. It's got to go out to the communities right now. And so we've, we've distributed a lot of it. We're looking at how we can get out more and, and the speed that we do that. We've got a lot of praise for how quickly we've responded and making sure those groups are getting the money. Mm -hmm. But in doing that, we then need more money to come in. So we're looking for um, bringing in that fund of more than a million pounds for Lancashire and community foundations across the country will be the same. And what we're doing is fundraising for groups who are currently delivering. Yeah. So if you think of charities or grassroots groups, they would be delivering and they'd be fundraising, looking at their long term future. They are so busy. They are so flat out. Mm -hmm. All their effort is going into delivery and very little is going into fundraising or awareness. Yeah. As a community foundation and as a charity, our job is to support them. So actually we're doing the fundraising on their behalf. We are going out and saying, this is what Lancashire needs. This is how we're responding as a county and as a community. How can we help? Not just one charity, but as many as we can across, across the area. So it's really looking about people who are looking to give and don't know where quite to, to give their money to, mm -hmm. um, we can help with that because we're, we're dealing with those groups, we're dealing with those charities, we're helping to get that money out in the best way possible. Yeah. Um, and what we're seeing is some fantastic uh, groups coming together, businesses who are allowing their staff to do some sponsored fundraising, to do some activity. Um, so individuals taking responsibility as well. And we'd love to see more of that, more people coming together as a group because fundraising for this isn't fundraising for one charity it's fundraising for many right across the county so we're right there to our first target but that's exploded into a new target of Lancashire supporting each other and and the county coming together yeah absolutely and I think I think the um the target might seem huge at a million and I know you're not far off that now and congratulations because it's it's no mean feat I mean every charity is asking for some sort of help and support right now and they need it and uh, it's incredible what the UK continue to to dip the hands in the pockets and pull out even in a crisis when nobody's getting paid mm. uh you know we, we we got 20 million for the captain that was running up and down his garden at 100 years yeah. old and you know the big night in and things like that it is incredible that we do just keep giving and whilst that target for you for Lancashire of a million or more seems huge a business doesn't have to give a ton. As long as everybody gives a little bit, it all adds up. So if a business donated, say, £100, Owen, what, what kind of things could that go on? Well, that will directly go to supporting uh, the things that I mentioned before. Yeah. Uh, food, reducing isolation, supporting mental health. Um, we are trying to more and more raise awareness of the types of businesses, sorry, types of groups that we have supported. 
and uh, case studies of, of where that money's gone. Um, one of the things that we're really looking at is we, we recognize that this is an incredibly tough time for businesses and individuals. Not everybody is able to give even that hundred pounds because there is a real challenge here. And we, we're well aware of that. We're, we're very conscious of it. And that's what's been so amazing about people's response to giving at this time. But a part of it is raising awareness as well. If people do a sponsored run or a, a bike ride or they do an activity socially distancing from their team in some way, the more they do, the more they raise awareness of what the fund is about. And if everybody is to put in that £10, £50, £100, suddenly that really grows exponentially. Yeah. So actually, it might seem a small amount to um, an in household or a company, but actually by talking about the Lancashire Fund, by talking about how the National Emergency Fund is being spread, we are, we are raising that awareness. And that's how they can really help as well. So we've got some, we can really talk to individuals and businesses about if they're able to get larger donations, how we can support them, how we can promote them, how they can be acknowledged for their generous gift. But also we can talk to smaller donations about spreading that word, raising that awareness. So people, I think what's happened for the NHS has been fantastic. Let's yeah. not take anything away from that. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant, it really is. Um, but it's now time to look at specifically in, in terms of counties, what's happening in your local area. Mm -hmm. We've, the Big 19 raised money for the National Emergency Trust, which comes back to us through, uh, the, through it being distributed across the county. So if you're interested in your local area, my role is specifically Lancashire, but if you want to know what's going on for you, look at what community foundations are distributing mm -hmm. and look to give to their specific funds um, in this area, Lancashire or Merseyside, mm -hmm. because it, it really helps to support those groups who might be at the end of your street. There may be people in your community who are volunteering their time who are in desperate need of extra funding to, to help those food banks, to reduce isolation, to really look at, at mental health. We know that's a big area currently and will continue to be in the future. Absolutely. And I think there's a, there's a lot of suffering. And I guess, I mean, firstly, congratulations on all the work that you're doing. And hopefully we can help raise some awareness and get some more individuals, businesses. Like you say, if they can't donate and they're worried about going out, there are things you can do from home. There are videos, uh, lots of things that, that can raise awareness. And, and even a few pounds off a lot of people really does mount up, doesn't it? So um, make... more people can come to the Community Foundation for Lancashire website and have a look at the local charities and uh, grassroots um, organisations that are really helping. Um, and I know that you're part of our Lancashire because I quite often get emails from them as well sharing what you do. Um, so keep up the great work in that respect. Um, just yeah. moving on to you personally, Owen, um, your, your job is kind of split really because you get all the satisfaction of the great work that you do and the donations that get collected and getting that out to those charities but by contrast you also see the devastation that happens i'm presuming there are small groups and charities that can no longer survive during this as well yes um i, I suppose at the moment we're not hearing about the ones who haven't survived so far we're doing our best to get funds to them to support them through this uh, crisis um so the ones who are applying who are eligible we can get the money to them um my suspicion is that we will start to hear over the coming weeks and months of, of those smaller charities and groups who just weren't able to keep going. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm pleased to say that because of the generosity, we haven't had that yet. And that's what we keep working to do to ensure that there aren't. But the longer this goes on, there will be um, organisations that fold. And the, the really tragic part of that is that the, the organisation folding is a tragedy, but the people that organisation support don't get the support that they need. Yeah. So we really need to make sure that that's being covered. And um, I have to say, I've been tremendously impressed by just the community spirit that's been shown, whether that's volunteers um, or just individuals checking up on each other. It's really nice to get a phone call with somebody saying, how are you doing? How, how are you in lockdown? And I think uh, Zoom and uh, Microsoft Teams and you know, any way of communicating like this has made a, a huge difference to be able to see people and to have that interaction. And I, and I actually hope that the positives that come out of this enable us to connect more in the future so that we're more aware of the type of groups uh, who need support and that those groups can have a better connection with the people they support through things like this. And we become innovative in the way that we try and meet these challenges um, and look at more partnership working in the future. How can we work together to, to solve some of these issues? 
I think it's definitely changed. Most of the people that I'm speaking to think business will never be the same again. Um, lots of people considering whether they can operate virtually in future, mm -hmm. save on the travel, the carbon emissions. I mean, the impact of some of these very small changes by a lot of us is huge. What, what do you anticipate? Any changes for Community Foundation for Lancashire? Anything that, that's come up during the pandemic? Has it uh, revealed any opportunities or innovative ways of working? I, I suppose I can talk about my role in that I'm usually um, out and about and across Lancashire. So I go to business networking events, um, go and see people speak, go and meet with organisations right across Lancashire. And, and any one day I could be meeting 100, 200 people at a time and having conversations and all of that has stopped. And I think actually that will change the way we work. It'll become much more about working remotely. And to do that, then we have to build in our relationships. We have to have better networks. We have to share in absolutely the way that you're doing, Lisa, and looking at how we can uh, make connections, pass on referrals, being more aware of what each other's doing, what support businesses need, and how they can give back in, in good times as well, and look at what they're doing for their community. Yeah. I also think there's a, an opportunity to look at what uh, staff are doing. Because this is a crisis that affected everybody, everybody will now have their areas that they feel they need to help and support. So whether that's tackling isolation, because they've seen what this has done to older people, or what they know they've experienced some mental health difficulties themselves, so they want to support mental health. And I think there'll be a shift to what social impact business has, so that we can avoid, uh, perhaps not this situation in the future, it's unavoidable, but look at how we can respond differently yes. in the future crisis, how we can support each other when we're in times of crisis. And the support that's come out for the NHS, how do we continue support that, like that in the community? So. I, I think my, how my role is delivered will change, but the need for it will only increase. And it's about sharing that message, really. What do people want to see their like, communities? Um, trying to get across the county and see so many people at the same time, it is so difficult. I mean, one of the, the beautiful things that you've helped us do to develop, Owen, by being part of our sharing, um, is to centralise our resources by county. We know firsthand that some of our members have seen your funding on our funding pages and not mm. only reached out to access it, but won it and already back on the site uploading and sharing their success stories. So, you know, when lockdown came for a lot of businesses, there was a big panic. Um, mm. For us, we just turned online to the network we'd been building for the last sort of four or five years. Um, and because it's a digital platform, very easy to find suppliers, customers, leads, connections, and keep going with the meetings. You know, we're responding in our own way. We're putting video and chat within the website so that in future when you're on and you do see somebody else online, you'll be able to have that conversation without setting up a meeting for weeks to come. Um, and sometimes it's best to strike while the iron's hot. So we're all, I think, individually doing our own little bit. And, and like you say, it's not necessarily in case this happens again, but it's just to make sure that we are solid if there's a reoccurrence or, or anything similar. And I think even if uh, another pandemic or COVID or anything comes back, I think we will be much more prepared a second time round. And even if nothing like that was on the radar, what this has taught us um, is to just take time out, take stock, have yeah. a look at your business, have a look at how you're doing it, how you can be uh, more fluent in that, um, uh, you know, a bit of lean management, cut back on the meetings and all those little things, like you say, the, the impact carbon footprint. And I think the, the emissions have been seen to drop vastly whilst people have been at home and factories have been closed. Um, there's a lot of innovation coming out of the back of this as well, Owen, from people. Yeah, and I think one of the things that I've really noticed is that in the conversations I've been having um, with businesses over the last um, 12 months, two years, is that a lot of businesses... Previously, we're talking about their business and the local community as if they were separate. We'll do something to give back to a local community when we're successful, as if they were, we're distanced from it. What we're seeing now is businesses talking about they are part of the local community. They're, they're in this together. Their workforce, their staff, their people of support are all in it in the same environment. And actually, that how do they respond to the local community? And I'm seeing a lot more people shopping locally. They're yeah. supporting the local butchers, greengrocers buying locally and local produce and looking at how can they support the business around the corner from them as well as county-wide rather than looking at nationally. And I think there'll be a shift towards that as well yeah. because it's understanding that that's what business needs. They need you to support them so they can keep employing people. And in return, that supports the local community and that's how businesses can give back. And I think we're going to see a much, much more yeah. of that and a, and a different approach really to how we 
all work together. Mm. That's, it's been a tough challenge. I mean, as you know, we've been sharing tenders and public sector opportunities for quite some time. And in the past, I yeah. think uh, applications were measured on price, product and service and quality and things like that. And then very recently, over the last sort of two or three years, social values was added as an element of, mm. of, of, you know, you need to tick this box as well in order to win this application. And I think that's where a lot of people fell down because we were being asked for social values experts to help them write that bit and actually the the pandemic has taught us it's quite easy to embed your social values you know connect with community foundation for Lancashire find a local charity you can support recruit local staff there are lots of ways to do it but I think we've, it's been forced upon us to try it um, and that will put things in people's armory going forward uh, yes totally agree I've had similar conversations about CSR that when businesses see their corporate social responsibility as an add-on, something that they're just giving to a bit of a tick box exercise, that they're not as successful, the ones who see it as what can I give back? How, who am I engaging with? How? Why am I engaging? And actually that shift will see not only a great return in terms of social investment, but that come back in terms of good business because people are looking to support people who've supported them as a community. They see, yes, people gave to the Lancashire, COVID support from they see that they were on the front lines giving something back when they could when they were able to and that they appreciate that and they want to do business with them they want to buy from them essentially definitely I mean Owen just turning to you a little bit more on a personal level and I know and I hope you don't mind me sharing that congratulations are in order um, thank you you're about to become a dad for the first time um, I am yeah been busy during lockdown baby's due in uh, no, is it November September September. You excited? Yeah, very excited. It's a, it's a wonderful time. Um, that's been a, my personal challenge during uh, this crisis has been um, I've sadly not been able to go to as many of the appointments as I wanted to. So I've not been able to go to scans and be there. Uh, it's put my wife the way I would have hoped. But um, in the great scheme of things, of all the other challenges, I can recognise what great work the NHS are doing. And uh, we're in a very fortunate position. Um, it's a little bit daunting to be bringing a baby into this uncertain time but we're very happy we're very excited we're ready for ready for the challenge brilliant well i'm so pleased for you i'm really excited <laughs> for you. and uh, make sure i'm on the picture list when you when you find this yeah. out what you want yeah um is there anything owen if you could put yourself in my shoes and be asking the questions is there anything i haven't asked you that you would have liked me to no i think it's you've been really thorough thank you um <laughs> I, I think that the final message from me is just really reiterate that we're not just coming with a hand up. We recognize the struggle for individuals and businesses. We're not saying everybody has to give. What we're looking at is that there are people out there who really want to give something back that they feel that they're able to. Well, if you are, we, we're really looking for people to give money to the Lancashire um, COVID support fund to find that on our website or to put that into a Google search and look for what you can do financially. Yeah. But as you mentioned before, that can be very small as well. For individuals looking at their individual teams if they've been furloughed, furloughed, how can they fundraise? What could they do to raise some awareness? And that would really help us. It would really help right now to keep those community groups uh, thriving, to keep them going during this time and help their local community whether that's food banks or reducing isolation or supporting mental health, because what we are seeing is this is going to go on for a lot longer, that even if things go back to work in, in the short term, which seems unlikely, we know that will be a longer term impact of this. So this is going to go on for a while, particularly for the third sector and those, those groups. So what we're doing is trying to help those groups fundraise and really support them. And just to consider that rather than just helping one charity, help many, by going through the Community Foundation for Lancashire, because that's what we're here to do. We're here to support lots of different charities, lots of different community groups. Uh, and you're distributing it to those that are most in need at, at, at that time. So I think it's- Absolutely. Quickly as we possibly can as well. That's the other thing, which is the speed that we're getting this money out, that we've had some wonderful feedback as a network nationally, that people are amazed at how much money we have managed to get to the community, mm. you know, turning things around within a week which is very, very quick in a sector. It's, it's almost unheard of. We're working as fast as we possibly can to get this money to the people who need it. So there are £5,000 grants. When people are applying, we are trying to turn that round as quick as possible. Yeah. 
Well, I know one of our members only applied a couple of weeks ago and she's already thriving and being able to deliver her vital services to people that really need it. So a right. massive thank you to you and all at Community Foundation for the fabulous stuff that you, that you continue to do every day. How do people get in touch with you, Owen? Uh, via our website, uh, which we can put in the, the link. Uh, but also if you just look for Lancashire COVID Support Fund, we are the official fund. And I, I should mention as well that of the money we've raised, uh, it has come from the National Emergency Trust, but also from the Lancashire Resilience Forum. Now that's made up of um, the council, so Lancashire County Council, Blackburn and Blackpool, uh, district councils, as well as the borough councils, they have put money in. Wow. So we are the official Lancashire response, um, which we're working with governments, we're working with local government to give to, and particularly individuals as well, and other trusts and foundations. So they've put in, um, so you can go on our website and contact us via there, and um, if you, my details are on there if you're looking at giving as well. And we can find Owen Phillips on LinkedIn. And of course, Community Foundation for Lancashire are on Lancashire because you guys are, are, are big on the sharing and, and that's appreciated yeah. as well. Um, for whatever you get out of it, you also put in it and that's exactly what it's all about. So thank you so much for joining me this week, Owen. Um, and uh, I look forward to seeing you in person in the not too distant future. Yes, that's great. Thanks, Lisa. Have a fabulous day. Yeah, and you.